instances of paranormal phenomena have been reported in this desolate place. Events that may reflect the area's tragic past. Guys, welcome back to Other Dangerous Podcast. We talk all things paranormal. I am Ken James, and welcome the fuck back, Jason fucking McKittrick. Whoa, how do I follow that, folks? Hey, folks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, folks. And if it can haunt how we're dwelling in the dark, we want to talk about it. I mm-hmm. left that out in the other episodes because guess what? Jay wasn't here. Yeah. And tonight, we are discussing... Whitley Strieber and the communion. Mm-hmm. Okay. For those who are unfamiliar, this is an author who had some uh, probes done, <laughs> had some uh, run ins <laughs> with a uh, particular other danger, uh, mm-hmm. the one that I am the most scared of, and the <laughs> one that is uh, probably the uh, most viral if you get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, buddy. But before we dive into that, we're going to head it over to Jay for tonight's Jump Scare. Thanks, Ken. All right, so tonight's Jump Scare comes to us from Charlie from Sacramento, California. Charlie. Oh, yeah. Charlie says, when I was living in Reno while attending college in 2009, I stumbled onto a website about unidentified decedents, dead people, and yeah. internet sleuths, sleuths who work on their cold cases. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interesting, and I decided to try it out. I found a case local to me and went to work it. It was a young woman who was shot in the back of the head on a remote uh, ma- uh, mountain trail. Oof, yeah, yeah. One of the creepiest aspects of the crime was even though she was murdered in July, there was enough snow on the ground to leave two sets of footprints from the location the vehicle she and her killer had parked at, and the single set of footprints left by her killer as he went back to the vehicle. Oh, uh, Yeah, fuck. right? Yeah. So, Jolly. Yeah. I dove headfirst into the case for months. I visited the trail where she had been found, but the day I found out she was buried in a local cemetery, things started to get weird. I found her unmarked grave and paid my respects, but had a lingering feeling that left me uneasy. Later that same day, I was going through some boxes. Uh, I found an old clock radio I hadn't used since 2005. The batteries were caked with acid and it didn't work, so I left it alone. That night, I was still bugged by my visit to the cemetery I went to and went to be around 10 p.m. I was awoken around 3 a.m. when the clock radio went off all on its own. It was glowing and beeping. I hit it really hard and didn't think about it until I woke up the next morning. I never did it again after that, and I kept it around for a few more years. It was only in retrospect on researching the case when I discovered the woman's time of death was never conclusively pinpointed, but they believed it had been between 11 and 6 a.m. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Well, you start digging. <sighs> Haunted clocks, man. Hey, man, Oof. you know, he was there. He went to the, uh, to the site, you know, yeah. then he went to the burial place, and then... Hey, maybe she's just trying to reach out, trying to tell him something. Yeah, give him a little, give him a little help, a little hint, a little clue yep. there. Mm-hmm. A little bugaboo. Ooh. Charles, <laughs> Chuck, Charlie, thank you for the submission. Yeah, thanks. And this Charlie. is this is one of our uh, a rare uh, submissions through Instagram, right? Yes, yes. Awesome. Uh, which Loving hey, that. we appreciate. We'll take oh. we'll take them anyway you uh, you want to send them to us. Yeah, yeah. Audio, writing, Instagram, Facebook, Gmail, all of them. Give it, give, give them, give them. We got them. <laughs> All right, so also we want to uh, we want to welcome Jay to Pennsylvania. That's a big thing. Uh, <laughs> thank you, so thank you. yeah, the the hiatus is over, as I've been calling it. Um, yeah, my ass some, is in Pennsylvania right now. Yeah, sitting sitting in Commonwealth soil, baby. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, dude, we love literally because I'm in the basement. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so we had a couple good episodes to fill in. I want to thank everyone, uh, Jimmy Alley. I want to thank Tim Burke, everyone uh, that, that 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 you know. Help me out uh, to to fill the void. 
to fill yeah, the thanks void. for filling Ken's void. Yeah, thanks for filling my void, guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, we want to welcome Jay. Uh, that this has been, you know, the 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 main reason for him not being here with us, and right. and uh, love having him back. I'm I'm glad to have him back, and uh, you know, fuck those other guys at Hell Town. No. <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you guys. They know them. they're all good shits, so, so we don't fuck them too. Bad. Right. Right. Yeah. No. Thanks. Uh, glad to uh, finally have moved here. I've been talking about it for a long time, and um, you know the situation, uh, the opportunity, I should say, presented itself, and um, you know we made it happen. So boom. Boom, I feel like baby. I blinked my eyes and here we are. Yeah, right. It's and crazy. You, yeah, the amount of stress you're under. Well, <laughs> yeah, I want yeah. maybe it feels like that because I I'm just choosing to just you know, not remember any of that. Right. That just literally, it out. I I shit you not. This move was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> like getting the house and then moving. Woo. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah baby. You know what? It's a testament to the character, the caliber of character. You did it. You're here, nice and way. you're back with us on other dangers. Mm. Mm. <laughs> whoa, wait, whoa, wait, what's this? Whoa, whoa. Some, oh, oh, wait, some just came across the other Dangerous Podcast news what? jazz. Oh, I thought it was a flaming skull. No, wait, get oh, down! Shit. Damn it! Uh, uh, Peter, uh, James. Peter James! Peter James! Uh, Peter James! I'm coming through. Dude, dude. Man, I always forget. I don't. I'm I know. Sorry. I know. You know it's all right. A little rusty. And right. Just, you know what? That's you know, what it is. It's you said move. something came across, and I yeah, immediately and you thought PTSD you know, led yeah. it to. Yep. I get it. But uh, this one is another haunted headline. So this week's haunted headline is a Georgia monument seen by some as satanic was damaged from a pre-dawn explosion. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know, a rural Georgia monument that some conservative Christians <laughs> criticized as satanic and others dubbed as America Stonehenge was demolished Wednesday after a pre-dawn bombing during one of its four granite panels was torn to rubble. The Georgia Guidestones Monument near Elberton was damaged by an explosive device. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said, and later knocked down for safety reasons, leaving a pile of rubble in the picture that investigators published. Surveillance footage showed a sharp explosion blowing one panel to rubble just after 4 a.m. Investigators also released video of a silver sedan leaving the monument. After prior vandalism, video cameras connected to the county's emergency dispatch center were stationed at the site, said uh, Albert Granite Association Executive Vice President Chris Kubas. Woo, baby. <laughs> so Okay, so f first thing, first thing. Uh, uh, what was it? Conservative Christians think it's satanic? What don't they think is satanic? That's right. number one. And, and the thing is, it's like, why point it to that? It's actually, yeah. it's actually who the people that really think it's the damaging are the ones that are focused on the elite and right. the ones that are that are worried about the... Glo uh, the, the globalists. Yeah, the globalists, yeah. Alex <laughs> Jones was yeah. like... Oh. Keep the population under under her know, eight million. What the shit? You know, like the, those are the people. It's not the conservative Christians. The conservative Christians, honestly, the real ones, they're like a fucking stone. You know, that's. I don't that, know. And then also, also, uh, what is the History Channel going to do now that this thing's got blown up? Or is this a whole new episode they're going to start? Because what's that? Right. One? All right. their shows end up at this place at least once. Yeah, sure. It's that. It's uh, Secrets of the Nazis. Yes. Uh, oh, jo right. Josh Gates. You know, right. and um, what's the and other then, one? The, the author, the bald guy, the skinny bald guy with the glasses. Um, he was. Well, he's the. What the, I don't remember the name of his show. They, they, I love. I actually do love the Mysteries of the Museum. That's like their best fucking show. Yeah, no, not that. That's uh, that's Don Wildman. That guy goes yeah. hard. Yeah, he does go hard. He's like our new Robert Stack in a way. He kind of is. Um, yeah. And he also like low key insults the other people on the show, which is always kind of funny. There's always one big right. in there. I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> and he does like his little smirk. As yeah. he like does the pound into his hand. Yeah, he does a lot of is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could it be? You know, and I, I dig that a lot. But I know I the way you're talking about name. it's I, I don't know his name, but I know you're talking about it. it's actually it was on Netflix for a while. Yeah, so. he was like he did like the like it was like the book of the president's book of secrets thing. Yes, um, yes. I yes. can't think of his name. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter because he's not the other guy. So <laughs> no. No. So I'm sure this is, you know. Well, I mean, it's not really. Also, another point there. Uh, another point there. Um, there's there's cameras that were connected to there were police cameras, so tax dollars were put towards watching this fucking thing. Right. Why? Well, and if you know the history of it, the weird thing 
Oh, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, I'm sure you do. But <laughs> for those who don't, like, there was, like, some lawyer that was representing some mm-hmm. anonymous man mm-hmm. who funded this, said this is what it has to have on mm-hmm. it, and there's, like, a little peek hole through that that, like, shows you what time of the fucking year it is. Like, it's, yeah. it's one of those, you know, it's one of those uh, mysterious things that it's like, who the fuck wanted this thing there, and why are they talking about keep the population under this and giving us these mm-hmm. rules? Mm-hmm fucking weird <laughs> it, i mean it, yeah. it, it totally is it's, it's it's honestly in my mind i always kind of thought it was just more like a roadside oddity <laughs> i don't right. think it had, right. had any connection to you know the rep the reptilians reptilians or you yeah. know <laughs> i don't know man you never know yeah you never know no you don't no well it's, it, it's odd it's odd and like the odder thing is that someone decided to blow it up for me <laughs> like, I, hey man it's it's what it is yeah uh, you know, I'm sure someone will fix it, or maybe they won't. Maybe this is part of the prophecy or something. Is there a prophecy? Yeah, well, they, there always they, is. There is, but they tore it all down. They're like, too dangerous now. So yeah. they just pulled it all down. Right, right. Okay. They're like, fuck your agenda, mm-hmm. globalists. Right. Uh, but someone, uh, it was probably Alex Jones. He was like, it probably I'm was. I'm tired of this. We're going we're gonna to put an end to this thing. <laughs> so, He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm so in debt from being sued so many times. I've got I to gotta take the... I do something, and then you know he just went berserk. Yeah. And then he pulls his shirt off, plants the bomb. Indeed. All right. So, <laughs> moving on from that haunted headline. <laughs> Ooh, the communion. Communion. Ridley Streber. Yep. Communion. Well, ri- first of all, Ken. Yes. I want to believe. I want to believe. We we want to believe. It's true. And this gentleman's creation, creations. Um, really, this is like one of the first, like, the image on the cover of that fucking book mm-hmm. created so many nightmares when I was a child. Mm. It's, it's horrific. All right. I believe the church I used to go to sold this book in their bookstore. <sighs> That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a lot of people come, man. We had a lot of people. Come. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I you know, I think I, I got gotcha you there. Yeah. But um, so communion, right? Okay, so this is w- written by. If you know anything about the, uh, you know the uh, the UFO scene, is that what they call it? The scene. It's the scene. The it's UFO scene. crew. I think they wanted like a cooler name. You know, they the wanted. UFO, put, um, I don't know. Triumvirate. I don't know. That's three people. Well, there's well, probably only three right. people that really. Hmm. Or the three races of aliens that control the, the fucking <laughs> yeah. world. Yeah, it's the mantids, uh, reptilians, and greys. Uh, well, no, what's the one? The, the Nordic? Uh, the Nordic ones. But they have a name. They're like the Alpha Centauri Zeticuli. The who gives the, a fuck, yeah. 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 Anu- <laughs> Anunnaki. Anunnaki. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, currently on the planet Nibiru that will come back into our solar mm-hmm. system in 10,000 years. You just wait. Does. You just wait. Well, in 10,000 years, I won't be here, so I don't give a fuck. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so, Mr. Streber is known as one of these, uh, one of these main abductees, right? So, you got him... Travis Walton and basically Betty and Barney Hill, like they're yeah. like the they're the big names. Um, however, you know, bringing you this uh, this subject, this this gentleman is a is a horror novelist mm. first. I don't know if right. really, anyone really knows that. Um, he's responsible for uh, a horror novel called The Wolfen, which is actually really fucking interesting. And there's a movie of that too with um, Albert Finney, and it's it's got some creepy shit in it. Like this race of like uh, wolf creatures that have evolved alongside of us, and they like man, live in the shadows. Ran after my own heart. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's actually really cool. Yeah. Um. But then he but then he comes out with you know he he's, he had these two great books that came out in uh, success. Um. But then um. <laughs> so in eighty seven he comes out with this his third novel communion and he says no this isn't you know. This is not a uh, work of fiction. This is true. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> No, no, this is true. Um, and says, uh, he, he, he contended that he was abducted from his cabin in upstate New York on the evening of December 26th, 1985, by non-human beings. Uh, he wrote about this experience and related experiences in Communion from 1987, which was his first non-fiction book. Um, although this book is uh, perceived generally as an account of alien abduction, Strieber draws no conclusions about the identity of the alleged abductors. He refers to the being as, quote unquote, the visitors, a name chosen to be as neutral as possible to entertain the possibility that they are not extraterrestrials. Weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 
So, um, <laughs> uh, both the hardcover and paperback edition of Communion reached the number one position in the New York Times bestseller list. Of course. Uh, with more than two million copies collectively sold, right? Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start bringing in a string in here, which I think I've already started, actually. And maybe you're going to see a comparison between something else we've covered before. Right. Um, <laughs> here's what I think. All right. So this comes out, right? He's, he's a horror author. And yes. How, how, how else? What, what's a great way to, um, I don't know. Sell books? Sell books is maybe, say. Guerrilla marketing? Work. Yeah. This isn't, a, this isn't a work of fiction. This is a um, true uh, true account. Yeah. Um, and then, Happened to me, of all people. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, um, so he, he says, okay, December 26, 1985, Strieber, uh, he's alone in his cabin in the woods. In, in the book, he's alone, which yes. is interesting. Yes, yes. Okay? And he's woken by a strange noise. And then he wakes up, and a small non-human entity is approaching his bed. All right? And then suddenly it was morning. All right. Not only had he awoken disoriented, but he felt oddly aggressive too. I mean, you would be too if you got. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? yeah. Why am I? Wh- yeah. Why am I sore? It hurts. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then so it was during a, a, a session of regressive hypnosis a few months later that some of the memories returned. According to Strieber, beings that he has since referred to as visitors, like I said, entered his home and abducted him. Um, while seen as a work of fiction added to his catalog of alien stories by many, Strieber never wavered from this position. In fact, his later work only doubled down on the notion that aliens were visiting him in his book, The Key, A True Encounter. Mm. Strieber detailed another alien encounter that he claims took place in Toronto, okay? Uh, Asleep in his uh, hotel room in the middle of the night on June 6, 1998, Strieber uh, Strieber claimed to have been visited by another mysterious stranger. Uh, Quote, I got up to open the door thinking it was the room service waiter, Strieber recalled. It was not. It was a man I described as about five and a half feet tall, older looking, like someone in his 70s. He wore dark colored clothing, a turtleneck, and charcoal slacks. 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 He's old. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Strieber, (laughs) the visitor, stood motionless by the window for nearly an hour, expounding on the dangers of creating an intelligence more evolved than its creator. Strieber said it was the most extraordinary conversation I've ever had in my life. Okay, so many were skeptical of Strieber's uh, alien abduction claims, but one former Green Beret commander and developer of weapons at Los Alamos, New Mexico, John B. Alexander, believes him. Uh, For more than two decades, I've been interacting with Whitley Strieber and found him to be one of the most intelligent and thoughtful researchers in the field. What field? Said Alexander. (laughs) There is no doubt he has had some very strange experiences, ones that even he does not claim to fully understand. Okay. And he's, but he's also like, I encountered a being wearing mm-hmm. dungarees. Yeah. All right. So th- here's what's funny about this one. And this one kind of got to me because, okay, what was this? 19, he says 1998, right? Yeah. Uh, he get he, you know, and this, this clown is there and then motionless by the window for nearly an hour and then talking the dangers. Okay. What does this remind you of? Injury cold, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this guy's just pulling shit out of his ass. Yeah, out of his, out of his, uh, you know, trying to get in the scene ass. Out of his, you know, pro recently probed. <laughs> yeah, Ho- well, wishes recently probed ass. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um. So right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, man. Uh, it is. Um, this guy. Um, this guy has taken a lot of hits right on the chin for all his stuff, which is kind of interesting. And this is why I wanted to um, kind of cover this first and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to where I'm going to. Um, he claims that this is all true, but he's also been caught in lies multiple times mm. because um, he claims, uh, which is, this colors it for me a little bit, um, he claims to have been at the, um, it was the, the, the famous uh, shooting at the University of Texas, um, the tower shooting in, really? in 1966 yeah. by uh, Charles Whitman. Yeah. Uh, he claimed, uh, in the book, he claims to have been there. Like, it's just part of one of the things he, like, talks about. In communion? Yeah. There's just a thing where he just talks about it. Um, I think it just, because I think he tries to relate, like, traumatic experiences. And, like, so first he tells this that it happened. And then years later, he's like, oh, no, I wasn't there. That was just the aliens implanting images into my mind. 
Right. Yeah. They do that, dude. It's they do. I mean, hey, that's 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 a good fallback point. You know, oh, the aliens, you know. Yeah, just, no. you know. Especially the aliens told me not to pay my bills anymore. So I yeah. guess you know. Yeah, the, the aliens said taxation is theft. So right, right, right. this is and, where I'm going. And the libertarians. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, aliens. <laughs> yeah. Or was that zip zap and Gleek Blurb? No, they have a bunch of other stuff. That's they're not right. worried they're, about taxes. Yeah, no, no, no. They're, they're they got a mixtape coming out apparently. Oh. Yeah, they got they got they got a lot of irons in the fire, man. They're, they sure do. Yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> just to further cover him before we go a little further, Whitley Strieber is currently the host of the spiritual and science themed podcast Dreamland. Yeah, he would be. Uh huh. Available on a weekly basis from his website Unknown Country. Uh, yeah, he, he you know he's you know in the whole the whole Art Bell kind of yeah, uh, yeah, coast yeah. to coast kind of uh, milieu. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let's, let's not, you know, Art Bell. No, no, George, Art Bell's great. Yeah, and no, George no, Norrie, they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're here to report, you know. They're, they're, they are. Uh, yeah. N- yes, okay. <laughs> That's another episode. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to, you know, basically bring this around because um, I kind of view him as just another one of these, you know, Amityville horror huckster types. Do you? You think yeah, that? You I kind of do. I think he might be a, a, a okay. He's a horror author, so unfortunately, right. in my mind, that makes him suspect to me. Because mm-hmm. like his whole Us. his job yeah. is creating stuff, and you know, in, in the sea of fiction that was out there, you know, in the you know or, uh, the eighties and, and whatnot, no social media had. You got to bring. You got to have some kind of like social, some kind of media fanfare to right. bring attention to your book. All right. Yeah, you got to have something to hit the tabloids. You yep. know, you got to have something that's going to spread that way. Yeah, I mean, hey, any attention is great. So mm-hmm. um, his his claims are kind of strange and, and also, um, I don't know, he kind of pulls from, you know, there's a little bit of Betty, Betty and Barney Hill in there. Right. All right. There's a little bit of the Allagash incident in there. Right. There's a little bit of, uh, you know. Area 51 lore in there. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of. So it's... well. If we talk about the description of the greys that are involved, not the mm-hmm. others, right. if we talk about that, that's almost like the drawing, mm-hmm. you know, that you see in right. that story. And that, that, the picture, which is the cover of that book, um, ha- had became like ubiquitous. Like everyone saw that book because it was, you know, it was a national bestseller. So that cover was everywhere. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yep. I mm-hmm. think he just happened to hit at a, at a really good time. And I think he, you know, he made his fortune and then like doubled down. He, he wrote yep. sequels. So, but I can't fault him too much because this led, this book led to perhaps one of the greatest and most insane pieces of acting ever committed to celluloid in history. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about I, the 1989 film, Communion. I literally, I, wanted, I literally just watched it before this yep. to refresh my brain. Starring, yep. sorry, go ahead. Starring Christopher Walken. That's folks, right. folks, if you have not seen this film, I want you to pause the episode, go watch the movie. It's free on Tubi. Back. Yeah, it's free on Tubi. Go check yep. it out. First of all, this movie, fucking buckle in, all right? Because this is, this is, and it has been described as Christopher Walken's most insane performance. Um, um appa- okay. Yeah, you go first cuz we <laughs> And it's funny too because I wanted to talk about this uh uh Whitley Strieber's communion because really I just wanted to get to the movie because that's the most interesting part out of this entire thing. Um Right. This film released in 1989 like I said. Um it, it's it has to be like you have to see it to to believe it, right? <laughs> Right? Uh, I'm not going to get too much into the ending yet, but... For, first of all, oh. it's, it hits you over the head like, wait a minute, is this score by, yes it is, Eric Clapton? What? <laughs> That's first. Yeah. All right? you, get, that, you get those like lethal weapony riffs, like, yeah. yeah. at times, and you're like, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And they got the whole like blues riffs going, and like, yeah. you know, the... the, the it's... Because he believed. Certain, oh, yeah. Eric Clapton was like, this is real. I got you. I got your back. The aliens pushed my kid out the window. Right? Right. Even though it was him. Uh, So he... um, (laughs) 
This one, <laughs> all right, so uh, let's let's talk about the movie. So the, the, mm-hmm. the first thing that I want to uh, shout out here is that I am a sucker for a cabin in the woods situation, and not just in the creepy sense, like in mm-hmm. the, oh, that's a nice cabin mm-hmm. in a nice area, you mm-hmm. know? Like, yeah. And they set you up with him being eccentric in his apartment, mm-hmm. right? In like, you know, and he's wearing that hat, you know, mm-hmm. where, of course, Stephen King and Johnny Depp used for uh, The Secret Window. That was kind of like that, like, oh, my goofy big old hat. You know, I have this thing. Also, I'm... maybe a little bit of Sylvester Stallone and over the top, you know, he turns it around. It's like a switch. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's badass, bro. But uh, <laughs> one thing I want to shout out first is like, so, you know, in the beginning of the movie, that he, he's like, you know, cooking and he's like burning it. And they come mm-hmm. back to later show you why he's burning the food. In yep. his um, the fastest fireman response time ever. ever because mm-hmm. they've had like, it with his shit. They're like, yeah. you know what? This, you know, he's constantly burning food. Yeah, he has a trouble with electronics. Yeah, um, they're like the bills in the mail, man. It's two hundred mm-hmm. and whatever dollars. Yep, and then he you tells them, yep, yeah. let your wife cook. Yeah, <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> that guy was uh, ready to throw down on site. That that fireman. That oh yeah, him. no, he, he he had it. Um, but w- importantly, to to uh, know a little little behind the um, little behind the scenes on this. Uh, Christopher Walken was allowed to do whatever he wanted. It's, Legitimately. It's apparent. It's apparent. There it's was apparent. a script, yes, but he, like, they let him just improv. They're like, well, here, you know, just do what you want here. So he was, he, he fucking swung for the fences in this movie because, like, there is not a scene where he's not like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially scenes where he randomly has eye makeup on. I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Artistic yeah. choice. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, even to the point where the real Whitley Strieber, who was on set from time to time, was actually has actually like distanced himself from from the film because he said Christopher Walken was too weird. Yeah, <laughs> the guy, the guy, the who, guy who, yeah, you know, well, uh, you know, claims that he was like the first anal probie. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. the first like you know, uh, fucking chip implant guy. Do you think that's his like hit like his like groupies are called probies? They have to be. Right, they should be. If they're not, I mean, right. they're hey, wasting an same opportunity. Of our fans. Yeah, you guys are the probies from now on. Just so you know. <laughs> anytime you comment or anytime you post something, hashtag proby. Mm-hmm. Actually, don't do that yet. Yeah, we haven't. Do that. We haven't That's, decided yet. We haven't. And that could go. That could go wrong. Yeah. So anyway, like, in the, well, it, yeah. it could be either like probies or like odiers. <laughs> it's like whoa, whoa, wait, no, another one of those. Another mm-hmm. one of those. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. So, um, he burns almost burns the fucking house down or whatever, <laughs> uh, and they t- they they take these trips to this you know this cabin in the woods, right? So you're saying, and yeah, dude, I I love that setting, and I and I yeah. I also gotta love you know watching this again, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that '80s style of like there's that haze to it, almost like mm-hmm. that, like you know, I miss that so much. Everything's yeah. too clear now. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But um, they get to this cabin, and, you know, they, they're hanging out, doing their weird shit. You know, Whitley, uh, Christopher Walken, and him and his wife have a very strange relationship. And then there's his brother, who clearly is not related to him. Uh, there's just a lot of weird stuff going on. So, um, <laughs> wakes up in the middle of the night, right? Uh, this is the scariest. When I was a kid, man, this, this was literally the scariest, like, scene in, in, in history, right? So he wakes up middle of the night, you know, he's, like, sweating or whatever, you know, doing his weird shit. Uh, and he sits in the chair and he, you know, leans over. He's like, is that someone there? <laughs> and then from the side of his dresser, right, the little, the face kind of, like, yeah. peeks out from the thing. Yeah. Dude, the first time I saw that, dude, I was probably, like, 10. I had nightmares for, like, a month. Right. And it's because it's one of those, it's... um I only can relate that in any other movie, the way the face moves mm-hmm. and like the uh, shine of it and sheen. Yeah. That's like the grudge when the face first comes down. Like right. that's the only kind of, cause like other movies don't really do that. If there's a face, yeah. it's way more animated. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's like that kind of like, why is it moving like that? It's yeah. unnatural. Yeah. So I, I get that. I get the, yeah. why little, little Jay was fucked up. <sighs> Dude. I, I like every, every time I see that scene, I still get a little tingle. I'm just like, <laughs> oof, fuck yeah. that. Yeah. <sighs> But then it goes down <laughs> some other really weird routes. Uh, so what do we got? He's, you know, he goes back, you know, it, it seems to be a dream, you know, he, you know, whatever goes, they go well, back he, to New York. Well, before that, it, they wake up 
and uh, he's making breakfast for you know, mm -hmm. his, I guess Ruski brother, <laughs> like, and he's just like he just like you know picks up all the pancakes out of the pan with him making them, and yeah. he just puts them on the plate. He's like, but "This isn't hot. I don't care." Yeah, he also then, you know he doesn't wash his hands. Right, right. Absolutely. So then, then the, the dude they're they're talking about you know like what happened last night. So they're talking about you know what happened last night and the light and they're like we saw this light and they're like oh it could have been you know and they're like no this mm -hmm. and, and then he finally's like honestly i thought there was a fire outside you know mm -hmm. he's like going yeah. so they're talking brother goes for a walk comes back and like take us take me home you know mm -hmm. yeah. what, what happened last night was not a brush off take me yeah. take me fucking home i think he's yeah. they're kind of trying to talk and then he's just like take me home and he like slams yeah. it you're like take us home we yeah. need <laughs> yeah take him home man take yeah him home. yeah Fuck so up. You know, and they're a weird little kid too, who just talks out of out of line all the time, and you just yeah. want to look at him and be like, "Adults are talking. Get, yeah. Go play with something." Shh. Yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> uh, so then he goes and um, has the re the regressive uh, the, the 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 regression therapy, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, for, well, first he goes and meets with them, right? The, the, <laughs> well, the survivors group. Well, no, that first. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're guys. skipping a big piece here. I'm sorry. Yes, you're so right. So he starts going down this path where his mm -hmm. son starts talking to his mommy about God and like no one's mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So she starts thinking he's like kind of imprinting these thoughts. Yeah. So he's getting more and more like fucked up being out in this wilderness. Mm -hmm. And he, he starts loading his shotgun and they have one oh, of those yeah. loaded arguments and like his back's toward is is toward like she's on the bed talking to him mm -hmm. and he's like don't look at me like that and she's like yeah. behind him and yeah. you're like oh shit so then he just grabs a shotgun and grabs his shells mm -hmm. and she like knocks his shells out and he's like whatever fuck you and he starts patrolling his own property yeah. but then he starts having the visions and he like kicks his own door in that he just left yeah and he just starts bang blasting things he thinks he sees yep. the wife comes out of the corner and he shoots at her but he misses mm -hmm. and she's just like you know, against the wall, and then yeah. like kind of like turns from, takes the gun, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Look, we're we're out of here. We're yeah. out of here if you don't fucking get this squared away." Yeah, Chief. yeah. Uh, which he does have a hallucination of one of, I guess we got to get to it now. One of the blue doctors, aliens, mm -hmm. which are hysterical, but also disgusting and kind of gross at the same time. Right. Right. Because in, in no other accounts of any alien abduction have these creatures ever shown up. Yeah. A blue, the blue doctors. Like, they're these little, like, what would you, little, I would say miniature blue Jabba the Huts in, yeah, like, with satin jumpsuits. Holocaust cloaks. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, he, they're weird. They are. They're very weird. Yeah. yeah. They, they administer the anal probe, too, which is a very strange scene. <laughs> to say the least yeah and that comes back in the regression therapy yes uh oh we did forget mm. the one um the early uh foreshadowing of all of this going down which right. was when he he's having that first like oh uh, yeah uh, when he wakes up and they put a wand <laughs> to his right, head right 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 and it's like a wand it doesn't look like a needle or anything though like, he's right. like dink a yeah. dinky, a little dinky. Yeah, and then he, then he knocks it off when he hears his kid, yeah. like, screaming. Yeah, yeah. Something about a spider. Yeah, well, the spider was the beginning part where he first was in there, but he was like, mm -hmm. maybe I didn't see a spider, and they leave him in the room anyway. They're like, yeah. And then he's because, like, yeah, he looks at him, he's like, I'll tell you what, I'm glad that this is not my room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just he's like, in yeah. <laughs> the kid's like, uh... And then as, yeah, maybe this isn't my room, but yeah, all the craziness happens. Mm -hmm. Regression therapy, the blue doctors with the Holocaust cloaks. Mm -hmm. um, but he ends up, yeah, the, the regression therapy I thought was was like, all right, Betty Barty Hill, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. sure. This is, this is literally, you know, a, a direct, you know, this is what happened to me. I had to go through it too to yeah. be able to get into my memories. Uh, the one thing I will say, I liked how uh, Chris Walker portrayed the uh, whole, like, you know, like, this sounds crazy, I know. And it's like, you know the real guy. You know, mm -hmm. you know, real Whitley wasn't like that. You know, no, he wasn't like... No. He, he wasn't like, uh, I know this is nuts, but, you know, I... Um, yeah, no, he, he, he totally... I, I like how he just pretends like he's not, you know... Everything's just weird. Everything's strange. 
And um, when he gets to the meeting where they're all talking about, it, it's like, you know, the whole round table, it's all these people have been like, you know, from all walks of life, they're like, oh, uh, yeah, you know, um, this isn't funny. And you know, uh, no, I didn't ask for an anal probe. They say anal probe a lot in this movie. Yeah. And then yeah. also the one woman who's like, oh, I was pregnant and then I woke up and then I wasn't. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, all right, man. It's like, uh, okay. But once again, like we always say, based on a true story, you know, yeah, like exactly. that whole thing. A true, well, it says on the cover, it says a true story. So, of the book, not of the movie. No, no, the movie is, it's fine. The movie is what, this is what, this is the real. Yeah, well, I got to tell this you. This is the I, real takeaway. I haven't watched it in like five years. So mm-hmm. watching it before this to prep, mm-hmm. it's better than I remember. Um, it's better like um, uh, the cinematography, like the. The shots are like... It's a good-looking movie. Yeah, exactly. Especially and, when they're on the bus and all the Mantis Heads uh, people <laughs> are on the bus. And he just, he just when he's freaking out. Right, right. And uh, there's a lot of good, like, you know, far away shots and then yeah. pull-ins. And, like, yeah. I remember watching it the first time and, like, being kind of like, I don't know what I'm watching. Then I watched it again, you know, when we talked about it, mm-hmm. like, maybe five, seven years ago. Yeah. And being like, hmm. <laughs> like... And then, like, I watched the thing, and I'm like, you know, I was like, it's actually good. And then, if you, you once you get to kind of the ending of it, like, once mm-hmm. you get to the ending of the movie, then you're like, okay, I see what they're doing with the direction. But mm-hmm. we'll get to that. But um, yeah, so like, when they end up leaving and going back, like, they're, like he's there, he pulls his shotgun, he almost shoots his wife because he's seeing these things. He starts going to the therapy, and. Um, you're like, you know, and he's doing a great job of being like the uh, reluctant, like, yeah. I, ha- I have to do this to save my marriage. Yeah. And uh, the woman who plays his wife, she's actually really good at it. Like, and, and, and she's, she's doing great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like his, like, when he, when he does the breaks from reality, like when he does his like mm-hmm. little, little, like, you know, Chris Walkenisms, you're yeah, like, like, yeah. yeah. So I see this. I don't want to think about that. So yeah, I- <laughs> yeah. He'll do that, and then like he'll he'll uh, he'll do like the look and like the, <laughs> and then laugh and then get yeah. like real like yeah, and then and then hey. gets real and then real grave yeah. You know, the, the voice. Is, <laughs> How about the scene when him and his uh, him and his uh, family go to the Halloween party? Mm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and he ends up like traumatizing the the, the kids. You see this like. Well, his kid uh, has been traumatized right, multiple right. times. So he's with this kid it's down the this hallway, kids. and there's like yep. the you know this jack o' lantern at the end of the hallway, mm-hmm. and they start creeping towards it, and he's like messing with them, like hey, it's a, hey. you know, he's like doing that and push because the whole movie's kind of been he's doing like, that. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, he's like, what's gonna happen? Yeah, and then yeah. it turns out it's what just like a little girl in a costume, right? So a little girl in a costume jumps out, and it's like a, like a it's a bug mask. Right. And he looks at it and like he's like he's like frozen. Right. Because like he's like, you know, he's obviously seen this somewhere before. <laughs> yeah, he says right. it to his wife later. He's like, it's he's like, it's like it was real. Although it had like I'd seen it somewhere before, but alive. Right. Yeah. And the wife's like, you were frightened by a Halloween mask. He's like, yeah. She's like, yeah. you were frightened by a Halloween. He's like, yeah, it's a fucking echo in here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> And then she starts saying all this wacky shit, like, yeah. I'm a good woman, you're a good man. Yeah, like, she's like, she tells him, she's like, that's where he's the back, when he's like, don't talk to my face like that, and he has back to her. Yeah. And uh, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a good wife, you have a beautiful son, you have a great life, you know, you can't let this ridiculous shit get to you. So here's where I want to interject there. Yeah. When, when you're having actual issues, yeah. and, like, people are... hysterical. Yeah, you're not as exter- you know, you you're still kind of like yeah. Huh. But uh also like yeah, I, I kind of got that in the way of where it's like, yeah, you, you got the stuff working out for you, at, but like, you know, you're still you can't get a handle on that. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not as lunatic as this movie is. Right. So I like at that point I was kind of like, yeah, but then he grabbed the shotgun and then mm-hmm. the shells and I was like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Relate like relatability done for me, you know, like eesh. Yeah, and then okay, and then we have the Christmas section where they go to the. For some reason, we get a whole like Christmas pageant, like you know, wh- yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every, I'm sorry. Every time his kid comes on, on the scene, I'm like, get him out of here, get, yeah. get him out of here. Yeah. Um, well, child actors. Not, yeah, they all can't be Haley Joel Osment, you know. 
Hmm. Um. Well, let's not go into him again because he's. <laughs> Sorry. I, I heard he's playing Little Face in the new Dick Tracy movie. Sure. <laughs> sure, sure. He could. He could. He's got a little <laughs> face. Um, yeah, so then, God, he, he goes a little more off the wall, wacko, but then because of the therapy, he kind of realizes what? That he has to like, confront it all, right? Whether it's real or not. And then sort of, because he's, he's done so much uh, to address like on everyone else's terms because there's that scene this is actually a really good acted scene so mm. this kind of like brought me back into like okay okay right. we're dealing with a good movie here uh is when uh his wife is talking to him before the actual um therapy the hypnosis because the therapist the group therapist she's like you know you should go see seek this uh rape therapy right and um but he's sitting there on his couch and he's like slouched and him and his wife are arguing. Yeah. And he's like being a shit, right? I, I like the quote from the scene where he's yeah. like, I'd rather stick pins in my so, eyeballs and let that wacko woman fool with me. Exactly. And that's how it starts, right? So they're like talking and this and that. And she's going into like kind of like the you owe me kind of stuff. And and, mm. uh, and then she's like, you know, you don't even care. And then she's like, you know, sit up when you're fucking talking to me. And in yeah. my head, I was like, yeah, sit up, dude. Like, mm -hmm. Sit up, man. Like well, you, you can know, tell like, she's had to deal with a lot of childish behavior from this ex guy. exactly. Well, they go through that because he's a writer. So like she was they get into that too, where it's like she's like, you know, when you they get I know what you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they get off the elevator real quick and they walk and she's like, So who's been doing your work? You know, like mm -hmm. and he looks at her and like she's like, Is it another woman? Is it this and that? And then they go right back into the elevator at the talk mm -hmm. and they go up. But uh so he's like talking and she like loses it kinda and he's mm -hmm. just like, I'd rather die. And then he like, you know, she's like, look, if you don't take this seriously, she goes, uh, you know, there is no more marriage, you know, like yeah, that's what yeah. it is. So then he sits up and goes, look, I'm sitting, I'm sitting up, I'm sitting. <laughs> so she gets upset and she takes her one shot and throws yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And my favorite, my favorite line is when he goes, uh, he's like, crazy women. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, yeah. he's just, that's what he says. Like he pushed her to that and like yeah. she throws but her shoe. Yeah, yeah. But crazy, she's crazy. <laughs> crazy women. Crazy yeah. women, you know, yeah. like, uh. Yeah, so he, and after that, you know, he goes to the, the hypnotic, you know, the hypnotic regression therapy, and that's some of the wackiest shit, because then you get to see what's, you know, what, what's been quote-unquote happening. Right. Um, you know, and then he gets to see the regression that um, it's been happening since he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, and that face is like the, kind of the fucking... I don't know, uh, like, because he says, he goes, was there an owl in here last night at the yeah. one point? Well, that's and, it. You think it, cause yeah. it looks like an owl. If you're having a right. dream like experience, it kind of looks like an owl. Um, that's also why he freaks out. Like the mantis or creature right. or whatever the hell that, that mask was looks like yeah. these aliens. But when they, tr when they finally get to the part where like, you know, he comes, he, he kind of comes to realization, right? Cause what they're, they're in that like weird, there's that weird ass scene where they're in the art gallery. Right. And they're kind of just talking about it. That's the very end. That's yeah, the yeah. very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but so he knows that he has to like confront this. So he, what is it? Does he go back? Um, he goes back to the, doesn't he go back yeah. to the cabin by himself, right? So before that, so he's in that meeting with all yeah. the people, right? Yes. So everyone's mm -hmm. having their encounters. And yep. he's even like, yo, you guys are fucking like. Yeah, because the one guy's in, like, I can't tell anyone on the force that an alien bit my dick off or whatever. Yeah, like that. yeah. And like, the, like, they're all like telling their stories. And the one guy's like, come on, tell me what they look like. Like, you know, yeah. like, they're all like so different and into it. And he's just kind of like, this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So he's leaving the meeting and the therapist goes like this, you know, this isn't this isn't a joke. Well, Biden goes, look, I've done everything that, you know, you guys recommended. I did every, everything for everyone else. I got to do something for myself. Right. So he goes back home. He gets dressed up in his, you know, finest suit, mm -hmm. puts his hat on. He's like dancing his way out. And his wife's like, you know, where are you going? And like, yeah. he kind of like stops and he's like, go and get a pack of smokes, you know? And yeah. he like, he yeah. goes out and like, she's like, you don't even smoke after he yeah. leaves. So he, he goes, he takes himself back to the, to the uh, farm, you know, mm -hmm. or the, or not the farm, the, uh, the wooded, the cabin. Yep. And there's just this light. And yeah. honestly, this visual, um, mm -hmm. if you watch the movie, this is like the coolest, like as far as like 
uh, lighting and effects go. Mm -hmm. It's just like a really cool scene. He shows up in his suit yep. and he starts like walking towards it. <laughs> as soon as he walks into the light, you're just like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, because, like that's what, yeah, oh, that's the scene of all scenes because he gets yeah. in there. Well, before he gets there, don't forget that she says, you look like you're going to your first communion. So that's right, where they get yeah. the, uh, you yeah. know, and you kind of think about it because that's, you know, that's where I got to say, this, this is such an author making a story here. Because right. It's like, you know, right. yeah, it's called communion, but it works with it because, you know, that's what he does at the end. He's, he's in communion with these with these entities or whatever you want to call right. it. Right. And he also ties it into spiritualism. And which he does that's, till today. Right. And that's that's the end. But before right, we go right. to that. So, so yeah. he gets inside, which is presumably the inside of their ship. Yeah. Holding right. a camera. He has holding he has a camera. camera. He get, he gives it to one of the little blue doctor guys. Yeah, because they're like, nah. Yeah. They're like this. No. And they're not talking. They're yeah. speaking with hand gestures and shit. Right. And then there's kids in there, and then there's like uh there's a head of one of them just talking by itself. Um <laughs> But at first, so they do this whole sequence of bowing. Yes. Different yes. types of bowing. Because, yes. you know, they're, and they're like, and he's just like, but you know, you're like Chris Walken. Mm -hmm. He showed all them these different bows to do. Yeah. Right? Like, like we said, I don't think we ever said on the episode, this movie was just them following. The, the, he didn't even know he was on a movie set. Like, just follow yeah. this fucking guy around. Yeah. Just, just put shit in his, in his way and just have him react to it. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> get all these guys in these costumes yeah. and then this. And like, let's see what he does. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. That's what it was. So then after, you know, they're doing the bowing and they're having a good time, then they do what they do, slap in some high fives, and then you're like, I don't know what's happening right now. And then all of a sudden one of them points, and then there's his double, which is yeah. really weird. Yeah. Because, you know, if you want to start taking, you know, the movie for whatever, you know, is this, obviously they're messing with people. They're messing with people's reproduction process. And, like, is this... Uh, well, he explains. So, so at that point, his double, right? So you see yeah. the the little doctor guys, but then you see the the actual like quote unquote grays that look like they're made of clay. Yes. And the best effect <laughs> is their hands. Their puppet arms. And they're yeah. Like, but the best effect is their fingers. That's the best yes. effect is the movement. Yeah. So you see those two. So you're like, wait, there's two different kinds of aliens here. Yes. And you're like trying to piece it together. Like, all right, who's who? And then. So then, yeah, they point after, like, they do all the bowing, they take his mm -hmm. camera, like, it's not here, and he's kind of, like, just accepting, like, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So when he when he sees his double, there's this, like, you know, stagehand woman who's, like, mm -hmm. the, the assistant that you haven't, well, hasn't been to the movie. And it's uh, Chris Walken, hair slicked back, mm -hmm. like a magician. Yes. And uh, he's got his, Don't you know. The, yeah, the little, the little yeah, mustache. Yeah, Gomez mustache. Yep. <laughs> and... So he starts talking, and here's where I liked it. Here's where it, it rounded it out for me. Here's where I was like, okay, I like this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, because what, what you're first dealing with is all this, like, lunatic shit. And even up until this point, I still like the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But then, but then you see the effects, right? So you start seeing the effects, and you're like, ah, it's going to can't be one of, the, one of the blue alien's mouth is always like, ooh, like, <laughs> you know, like, like it's blowing a horn. And, like, they, they all, that you know. weird noise, that air, yeah. air. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. So, like, up until that point, like, you're like, everything else is great. Then you see the effects. You're like, eh, uh. And you're like, ah, I don't know if I can get behind that. But even though how, how weird that scene was, so when you start seeing Chris's double, who's talking back to him as, mm -hmm. as Whitley. No. Uh, so he starts talking to him, and uh, he starts basically explaining a magic trick to him, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's saying, like, keep your hands on the table, keep your eyes over here. Um, you know, checking the hat, and he's like doing this whole spiel, but you kind of start to go, oh wait, so even these aliens, you know, they're, they're these characters that he sees aren't what they really look like. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to even explain further, where he's like kind of having that moment of like, you know, I want to see what's behind this. So mm -hmm. they take those faces that you see that look like they're made out of clay. It's yeah, not like gray. It's like yeah. It's brand. So it's cut off. They take the bottom half from this, like, almost like, uh, it's not a lizard, but it's like meat, like bad yeah, beef with, it's, a it's, yeah. with a mouth. Yeah. And, and then, and like, they show that, and like, that was supposed to inspire, like, you know, scare him. And he, he's mm -hmm. even like, nah, that's not even what you look like. Yeah. He's like, you're not going to show me what you look like. Mm -hmm. And then the guys, the, the double, which is obviously something imprint, imprinted in his head, is like, yeah, you're never going to know what we look like. This is all shit. 
that we're showing you. And that kind of rounded it out for me about with like the, the whole kind of concept, which I found really cool. And I hope, you know, that that's kind of mm -hmm. uh, how uh, Mr. Whitley actually, you know, uh, presented it because that makes the most sense that mm -hmm. like, you know, all these, you know, s suppressed memories and all these things that he would have witnessed that he wrote about, mm -hmm. uh, if he wants to be taken seriously, you know, you, you say you see th these things definitively, and these are the things that happen, which apparently reverted back to his childhood. And right. um, but, like him, that that whole like uh, argument with himself and this alien entity being like, we're all this is like, we create all this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're just seeing this. You're dancing. He's in there yeah. dancing with him. You know, like, <laughs> it's crazy. yeah, it's wacky. It but is. like, but that I. I that silliness, like that conversation there when he, when he was just like, mm -hmm. you're, you're never going to show me what you actually look like. Yeah. That one, I was like, okay, this is, this is good. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I totally agree. And I, and I do like that whole thing because it's like, that's where you kind of almost get into like a metaphysical kind of aspect of it. Right. Cause it's like, are these aliens, you know, and what does that even mean? Are they some kind of, you know, are they this extra dimensional race or they are, do they just exist in his head? Right. Like it's you don't really ever get that answer right. because there's the whole thing where he even says he's like, you know, I just found out this has been with me my whole life and I'm yep. going to pass it on to my son. So right. Like, like right. What, is, what is he talking about? Like, is that him just saying, I'm going to, you know, my father had mental illness. So now my, yeah. I have it and then my son's yeah. going to have it. Like, yeah. Yep. I can see where he was going. Like, you really can see where he was going with this. And like, I almost wish that he presented this as just a work of fiction because like it's it's more poignant that way because it's right. like it's like this is someone dealing with some kind of you know tragedy or some kind right. of something that occurred in his life yeah and this is his way of like masking it in these like creatures and like clearly something happened to the guy right well so you know? and then another point in the movie that they they do this so like when when he uh, so they go to the they go to the um the art uh, museum like you were mm -hmm. saying yeah and they're walking through and, and they're just kind of coming to grips with it because he's like himself again and they're talking yeah. and like you're like okay he's okay and this is like after that and she's like you know what this was god it comes in all these different forms it's it's not one thing it's like you know yeah which i liked because it's like you know your higher powers whatever like it's whatever mm -hmm. you can kind of grasp onto and relate to mm -hmm. and she so she's like talking to him about it she's like you know what i think they gave you a gift don't waste it, right? Mm -hmm. Which, which, once again, it's a movie. You know, I don't know how much it, you know, relates to the book, but I like that. So, um, so then they go back to like, you know, she's bringing him dinner, right? Mm -hmm. And he's in front of the fireplace, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Oh, I made, you know, it's like citrus press duck," and he's just like, he looks at her, you know, and he's like, "I gotta write about this," you know, this is what I gotta write about. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I like the look. Oh, no, no. She goes, what are you going to do? Drive a taxi? You know, like, because like yeah. this, what you're going to be writing about is so silly. Because earlier on, she tells him it's tabloid writing. That's mm -hmm. why she confronted him. She, it's newspaper writing or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he goes, uh, he goes, no, I'm going to write about this. I'm going to write about us, tell our story. And he's like, you know, I'm going to do it right now. Fuck this dinner. <laughs> so he goes in the back room. And he just immediately logs onto his computer. He's just fucking, you know, fucking uh, <laughs> Whitley's back. You know, he's like going yeah. in. And then like, you know, she's asleep. He's like coming in with like his first notes and everything. And then it, it, it does a couple cutscenes, and then the lights happen and the whole family sees it, right? Mm -hmm. So like at that point, he, he's like, wakes up and he's like, let's go. We're going to the roof. We're going to the roof. Mm -hmm. And nothing happens from it, but they all see the lights, right? Well, and then the stars. Yeah, but like they, they, but it's still not like because the kid keeps going, Dad, why are we up here? What are we doing? You know, like he keeps asking those questions the whole time. Yep. And like, yeah, they show the stars and everything, but it's still like, it's still like that, like, um, that whole like they experience, but they still can't experience what he is. And right. what I like about that is the, um, the, the whole concept of like, uh, and once again, I don't know. The book. I've never read it. I, I can it's, only. It's it's very. It's it's actually kind of. It's actually close. Believe right. it or not, okay. it's actually pretty close. Um, th there's obviously some um, stylistic uh, choices that they, right. they they chose to change, but it's actually not that far off. 
Okay. Um, I mean, there's some details that are different. Some, so a lot of scenes that like, it, like that, the night that they come to the house um, and um, they abduct him, but then like his wife is there. That doesn't happen. He's there by himself. Right. Um, it, it's pretty close though. Like it actually is pretty close. So um, I actually think it's um, the poignant parts of it is why I say when I, when I said earlier that like, you know, this is a huckster here. Yeah. Because sure. this was clearly constructed and I'm not saying that, nothing happened to him but like you i when i remember read i actually read this like i never read it i actually read this yeah. about a year ago finally and it's, it's it's a very short book right and um i read it in about two nights and um you clearly get the idea that like this something happened to this guy when he was a kid like i don't yeah. know what it was but yeah. it was some kind of trauma and he's using this you know he uses his imagination to kind of like cloak some of this stuff and then okay. like this book was him um Hey, maybe there was some entities. I'd love to, sure. like I said at the beginning of this episode, I want to believe, man. Um, but when you, you when you actually get to this stuff and then you get to that scene that you're talking about, it's like, you know, this guy is clearly dealing with something, whatever that yeah. may be. And it's like, maybe you can't ever see them because it's like, uh, you know, you're not ever going to get to the bottom of this unless right. you deal with your stuff, you know? Yeah. And, then, you know, he's writing about it. It's like exercising a kind of... I and feel then, like I feel like um, him realizing what he was doing to his son, yeah, with his things, yeah, kind of made him mean like I have to work this out and write this yeah. out. I feel like yeah. that was a big clarity moment for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whether it's real or not is almost irrelevant at that point because right. then it's like it's just him working through what, whether the issues are these you know creatures from another dimension or planet, or it's just <laughs> his other shit that may have happened. Yeah. To him. It doesn't yeah. matter. He's got to work through it so he can yeah. like you know. He can continue his life and, and figure it all out. Um, the, it's going to be weird. Uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast. I might have told you this uh, in confidence before. But um, uh, my dad, who uh, died when I was 11, um, he had some stuff, right? Mm. Um, he was smart. Guy was smart, man. Like, he could quote whatever. Like, he was one of those guys who could, like, he passed the real estate exam, like, without even studying. Like, he's just one of those guys, right? He was mm-hmm. one of those people. But one time when we were all babies, we were all little kids, uh, mm-hmm. my mom was dead because my mom has been working since she was, you know, 16, 17 on her own, you know, in real estate. She's been on her own. And uh, shout out to Sharon. Sharon. She helped us get this house. Ow! Ow! Sharon James. Ow! <laughs> but she was, uh, she was downstairs working, and uh, my dad came, came, like, she heard a huge bang. Mm-hmm. Out back, and my dad came like lumbering in. He was a big motherfucker, and he just was like, he was like, Sharon, I just, I just scared away these demons. And my mom's like, what? And he's like, there are demons out back. They were trying to get in the house and get the kids. And she's like, Ed, <laughs> she was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm. You know. So the whole I pass it on to my kid thing, right? Yeah. Freaks me out, man. It does. And, uh, you know, like I said, yeah, died when I was 11. Had yeah. his demons. Had his demons. I don't think they're my demons. I really don't. I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I have learned to come to grips with a lot of things. But sure. that, uh, that moment in that movie was kind of poignant to me. And uh, it's weird, man. It's weird when, like... Especially now, like, let's say I have an experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, with paranormal stuff, we both had it. Sure. And, like, my brother, Eric, he's the most scared of this shit, right? So, Eric's always like, you know, like, this is a psychosis, pissed down. Speaking of which, Eric, we're getting you on this fucking podcast. Yeah. You're, he'll come on. He'll come on. It's not going to be in a host facet like it was going to be. But, uh, and Tim did a great job filling in. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, uh, you know... Like, but that's the thing. Like, Eric is like, uh, it's so funny. Uh, Hill House, Haunting Hill House. Yep. The oldest brother that was mm-hmm. like, you know, like, this is our family. That's Eric. Like, that's <laughs> Eric, right? And like, in, in the same breath, I'm almost like, nah, man, it, it can't be that. Because we're, we're not delusional people. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all hard workers and, and we're all like solid in our, our psyche of like, no, like, we'll throw away the bullshit and then we'll mm-hmm. discuss the craziness. Mm-hmm. And like when I, but with that kind of, it kind of rocked me a little bit, but in the same breath, I was like, nah, man, <laughs> like, nah, yeah. like, nah, I know when things are things and when things aren't things. And it's, it's just the, it's weird that the movie 
actually, you know, resonated more with me than the story. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, totally. Eh, and it's actually, it's, it's actually not weirder. It's more like art affecting me because it's a, you know, production. You well, know yeah, I mean? and it's also it's people up on the screen, and they, you know, right, they have this right. this chemistry, and and I think. The, the people who made this film clearly saw that, that I, that's the heart of the story. It's this, this guy yeah. dealing with his trauma, whether it's right. whatever it is, because there's no definitive answer, which is perfect because how could there be? Right. Cause if it is the most, if, if it is the fantastical thing that <laughs> we hope it is, yeah. um, <laughs> that's inexplicable just to begin with. And you're not going to have an answer on that. So, yeah. Uh, and that even, you know, and if we're going to go that route, that it is that, you know, um, those entities, whenever we encounter them in these stories, always kind of act that way, right? They're like, you yeah. know, here I am. Here's here's one point one point one percent of what I know about yeah. shit, and I'm going to give yeah. you a little bit. And there you go. And they go kind of kind of deal with that as we yeah, laugh, that. you know, as we laugh back here and we dance and yeah, fucking you yep. know, yep. make let you know how small you really are. Yep, and um. It's, you know, I find myself increasingly um, bringing this into the podcast, but it's, I can't help it. Um, this, this guy was a horror author, so he clearly knew the history of horror and, right. and reading things. This, this, a lot of this um, directly relates to, to the Lovecraft story, um, Whisper in Darkness. There's a scene where one of these creatures uh, dons the disguise of a human and, and proceeds to tell him like the, the makings of the universe and like all this crazy shit and it completely fucks this guy up. Right. And it's like, I already, and I know that and I've read that and I, and, I, and so I think of that and this story and it's like, this guy had to have read that because how could he not? Yeah, right. And, right. but then also, I also think of like Indrid Cold and I mentioned it before. He comes in and he gives you these like, you know, tells you, you know, of the nature of, of things and the fabric of the universe. And it's like here's a, here's a tantalizing part of it, but this is all you're going to get because you're just human. You can't right. know anything beyond this. Like right. you're just you, you're in this you know you're in this you know uh, this meat robot. Uh, that's yeah. what you have yeah. right now. Yeah. You can't experience yeah. anything beyond that. You know. Uh, well, so here's the whole story and 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 uh, how it plays out. Um, and you said it's very close to the book and the, uh, the movie. Here's what I like about it, right. Mm-hmm. What I like about it is um, the whole coming to grips with things you don't understand. Yeah. And also, I like the fact that it's like, it kind of ends with, I don't understand. I don't know. This is just what's been said. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the, the unbearable weight that we have as individuals, that we have so much stuff in our head that we try to like we we, we either com- compartmentalize or we or we grant we make it grandiose and all this stuff mm-hmm. like there's so much we don't know that we make that that's so important right and i think yeah. the end of that movie was like when she's like oh i have you back is that he kind of realized that the big isn't as big as as we think and the small is the important but also the big is unattainable and not understandable Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think he kind of just came to a point where he's like, I'm not going to ever understand this. And I have to be okay with that. Right. And that, that that's what I was getting to in a yeah. roundabout way there. But like, yeah. and that's cool. And I, I, I really like that about, and I, I, you know, like I said, I never read the, written, uh, read the book. And, mm-hmm. and we had this, we talked about this, like I said, when we were discussing this episode, but we talked about this like, uh, like seven years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it I, I I was a different man, man. <laughs> you know? so like I, I you know I watched the movie and everything, and I was just like, uh, yeah. but then watching it again now, where I was at, where I'm at, and like, and everything, it's it's I do like also what what his wife said in the movie was good writing. I felt mm-hmm. I thought the movie had a lot of good writing. I like yeah, it has it has a lot of good character uh, scenes, right? Like, again, right. Like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of good uh, model or dialogue, mm-hmm. and when she was just saying if, at, at the one point at the end when she's just like. You know, like it's God. It's your version of it. It's our version of it. It's you know, like it's all different, mm-hmm. but it is. You know, it's like it, yeah. it is that. That's what it is. Yeah. So like, where we, you know, we'll, we'll we've had haunting experiences. We've never been abducted. Thank God. No, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. We haven't gone through the uh, hypnotic <laughs> regression therapy. No. But like, you know, we've had our experiences. We've had our things, and it's like. 
you know, is that is that our connection to God or the universe, whatever you want to call it? And, I don't know. I think I honestly, I, th- I also think that trying to go down that path and try to figure it out through that way, I think um, never leads to any answers. No, it leads to it leads to panic attacks. It, it leads to <laughs> anal probes by little blue doctors. <laughs> right? Sometimes that's better. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, it's it. You know, honestly, it, it is a good movie. It's definitely a movie people should check out. And and the story, yeah, it's a huckster kind of deal. Um, maybe guys trying to push books. Yeah. But if, if it happened, man, if that's well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, here's the thing. Maybe it did. I'll, I'll give him a little benefit of the doubt. Maybe, maybe it did happen, but it happened to a horror author who was successful and tasted success two times in a big way. Right. So it like, you know, the the skeptic in me, I see that. I'm like, dude, come on. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to not be that way. Right. About it. Even if we're believers, even if we're believers, it's hard not to be like, Hey man, who who were you reading before this? You know, like, I don't know. A hundred percent. hundred percent and in these times in these times where the government has admitted that there's ufo like uaps like well that yes they have however that doesn't mean that all this is true all that means is that there is i know flying objects that doesn't that doesn't confirm that all these stories are true who even says that there's a link between any of them no one what i'm saying is that weird shit happens that has been said that no you know because the general gen pop is out here like <laughs> nah you know yeah. none of this is real mm-hmm. and then like uh, uh the the tech director at my work he comes out he's like he's like you know he's always like oh do you believe in this you know <laughs> today tremors was on the tv he comes mm-hmm. out he goes you believe in this you believe there's these things and i was like well no this is a movie I was like, "There's this isn't based off lore and, and you know, mm-hmm. you know, shit." Because the TV's behind me, I can't watch it. I can right. hear it, but I'm like, "No, this isn't." You know, I was like, "Are you talking about ghosts?" He's like, "You believe in ghosts and aliens?" I was like, "Well, no, like, it's different from Trevor's man." <laughs> like, right. Although it could like, be based on the, the Mongolian death worm. Right, and that's what Tulowski brought up because yeah. we were because the day before we had Discovery on, and that's what mm-hmm. Josh Gates was looking for. Uh, and he, he, they found a, a, a smaller anaconda, and they were saying mm-hmm. this might be a subspecies, and they took DNA. Mm-hmm. And that's when I said, I was like, oh, I go back to what happened to you know mm-hmm. Jer- the Jersey Devil. Uh, but like the thing is, like yeah, look, Certain things have been confirmed that exist. I'm not saying they're fully connected. What I'm saying is that there's shit out there we don't understand that the government's willing to admit now. You know, that, like, they don't even have a fucking grip on it. So... You know what I think it is? What do you think it is? Honestly, I think it's it's our tech that they're just like, oh, yeah, it's aliens. I think they're... Yeah, that's what I think. I think we have some shit that, um, you know... They, what do they say? At any given time, the military has stuff that's twenty years ahead of what we have right now. Yes, yes. Um, I think it's some. I think it's something like that. Believe me, I want to think that aliens are visiting our planet. But wait, 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 wait. What? Like even like the Black Knight, like all that stuff. Like even oh, the like, Black Knight satellite. That's, yeah, like that's somewhat been debunked. I, I haven't seen full debunkedness of it. Just like, look I've up seen, the Black Knight satellite. I have plenty of times. I've been there, bro. Like look, I, I want to, I really want to. Like, and if you show me stuff that, that's, you know, I'll look at it. Um, but but you're asking me what I think it what I think it really is. I think you it's think tech. it's it's tech. You I think, think it's tech. tech. I really do. Okay, that's what I think. And maybe I'll it's uh, you know, maybe it's just being put out there. They're testing it. It's doing what it does. It, they're testing it against the stuff that we have now. Um, you know, because militarily, you know, they got to stay ahead and they got to stay ahead of you know. Sure. Sure. China specifically, so you know, maybe maybe it's being piloted by Steven Seagal. I don't know, dude. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> don't bring up so gay Steven Seagal. Man. So gay. <laughs> I 
piloted by Steven Seagal. Are we talking about, uh, what was it, uh, Executive Decision? Is that what we're talking about? Sure. Where he dies in the first 10 minutes? Yeah. Saving Kurt Russell? Yeah. <sighs> I love yeah. that. Um, yeah, man. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I want to... I, Dude, this is this is like the the, the basic uh, you know uh, seed of this podcast. Yeah, dude, I, I want to believe in all that. Right, right. And hey, if it turns out that there really are aliens, and you know, a month from now they you know they land on the you know front lawn of the White House, dude, I, I'm there. I'm there for it. But um, yeah, yeah. You know, but um. Well, I, if that happens, I'm 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 about in the woods somewhere. Yeah. I'm ar- I'm arming up. I got canned goods. <laughs> like if that happens, yeah. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, um, but then then you go then right, but then in the same vein of thinking that it really is aliens there, um, I think it was Stephen Hawking or Carl Sagan. They both I think they both said very something very similar. If aliens show up on our planet, it's not going to be good for us because they're here for something. Yeah, they both they both agreed on that sentiment. Yeah, so it's like I hope they're not. Uh, as much as I would like to see some kind of alien life and know that there's there's stuff out there, which there <sighs> undoubtedly must be, has to be. Um, yeah <laughs> well like, look my last I, I, my last thing on that aspect mm-hmm. of it is like yeah. look ready look at space you've done this to me oh, yeah. a bunch of times so the vastness of the darkness that is space mm-hmm. is constantly expanding and it doesn't even matter it's the, the, and it's, it's infinite yeah. it's, I'm saying and it's infinite right yeah. mm-hmm. dude we're just on this little speck yeah. that might be flat up here. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And anyone that thinks that the, the Earth is actually round, this spherical, actually look mm-hmm. up the actual shape. It's like, mis- it'll fuck you up if you actually look up what the... It's not the, a perfect sphere. It's yeah, not, no, it's, it's from weird. The, from it's the, yeah. From the gravitational pull yeah. and, the, um, and the constant spinning, it's actually a yeah. little, little squished. And it's also like lumpy in places. It's it's weird. It's weird. But I mean, look, yeah, we both want to believe, right? And yeah. this Who is cool. It's a cool story, and Chris Walken depicted it. Chris Walken is the closest we're going to get to an alien, so he was yeah. perfect for this yeah. because that guy is out of his fucking mind. If you want to have a good, you want to have a good uh, little uh, chuckle after this, look up the Christopher Walken. Um, Today I'm an alligator story, and you'll <laughs> you'll you'll have a good chuckle. Yeah, it's, it's a good story. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have any uh, closing statements on this, Jake? Um, I love this movie um, f- uh, for the first reason: um, a movie must be entertaining, and this movie is fucking entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, secondly, because it scared the shit out of me uh, when I was a kid, when I was probably reading too many of those Time Life books. <laughs> um, <laughs> But now, older, you know, being a little older and, and watching it now, I, it, it has some poignant things to it, you know, where you can kind of like metaphorically watch it and think about the things that they're really trying to talk about in it. And, you know, and at the end of the day, you get the most, you know, the craziest Christopher Walken performance, which yeah. that everyone should own this movie just because of that, because yeah. when he's gone, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like, yeah. That's the one that we're going to have to watch. Yeah. That's, that's the one we should be watching. That's like the hidden gem that'll come up on those like looper lists and shit. Dude, that's the one I'm telling you. Once once he passes or just someone might, you know, pull it out somewhere and like whatever, that's the one that people are going to be like, dude, yeah, but did you see Communion? Like, yeah, he's in yeah. Pulp Fiction. It's like, fuck his role in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> have you seen Communion? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no, but he, but King of New York. Fuck King yeah. of New York. You're like he was a human in those movies. You yeah, know? like yeah, yeah. He was oh, playing like a role. Balls of fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, balls of fury. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. whatever the yeah. fuck it is, yeah. Yeah. Batman returns. Get the fuck. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, they throw true romance at you. Right, yeah. right. Well, you know, uh, uh, clearly they haven't seen it. It's like yeah. okay, so yeah. whatever you're talking about, it's like yeah. now you need to watch this film. So exactly. I guess my closing statement would be what I said in the beginning. If you have not viewed this film please do you not me not me the favor <laughs> do the favor right get this film you know uh, it's on tubi it. it's on tubi for free yeah man you, you get like four ad- adverts advertisements in in there yeah um i own it because i needed it um <laughs> i actually own it two different ways um but please watch this movie because it's entertaining in a way that movies just aren't allowed to be anymore. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, I want to want to close uh, 
close this off for my closing statements. Um, it's a little heavy. Uh, this uh, last week, uh, we lost a uh, a friend. Uh, he was a friend of, of uh, the show, it, it, as far as my regard goes. Um, listener. Yeah, it was a listener last December, and he was he's uh, one of my wife and my brother-in-law's best friends. Um, last December, he was like, hey, man, is, is, is your podcast on Google? I was like, dude, it's everywhere. And then it unleashed a whole different, you know, conversation about uh, his his wife and her kids seeing ghosts. And I went into like Kindergeist, and he's like, "Is that a thing?" But then, you know, we we went ended up going into Morbius. I was gonna suck ass, and uh, he was one of those guys who was like me and Jay. We're like we have that relationship. Uh, I ended up getting close to him through social media. Um, I you know I hung out with him a couple times, and like I said, he was he was one of my wife's best friends, and. Um, and we, uh, um, a couple of our other listeners are, you know, way closer than I was with him. Like Paul, who submitted the story with the Ouija board and the mother upstairs. Remember mm-hmm. that one? And her knowing that they were playing with the Ouija board. Uh, uh, Mike, Stacy, um, he was an awesome guy. And it's, it's tough. It's tough to lose a nerd like him. That's like one of us. Mm-hmm. And, uh. He was a huge Ghostbusters fan, man. But he was one of those guys I would go to, like I would go to Jay, and then we would just like demolish shitty, <laughs> uh, shitty DC Marvel movies and Star Wars. Like he was a good fella. He was. Yeah, one he of was us. a good. Yeah, he was one of us. He was. Oh, yeah. He was a good guy. <laughs> uh, I was gonna send everyone over to um, the GoFundMe, but they took it down because of fraud and everything that's going on. Even the people at the July Fourth thing, and it's it's, it's bullshit. Uh, but Chris Amaki. Legit dude, awesome guy. We lost a true ghost head. And uh, one of the things that fucked me up about all this, I was going back to our convers- one of our conversations that we had after it happened. And uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things we were talking about, he brought up, he was like, what are your thoughts on the new Ghostbusters? He's like, I know you're as big a fan as I am. Was he talking about the 2016 Ghostbusters? No, no, no. <laughs> no he, uh, he actually, just like you, uh, what's his fucking name, the director? Paul Feig. Paul Feig. He, he, just like you, uh, he made it a campaign and a, uh, a personal mission <laughs> to fucking go after him. Yeah, I got he, blocked after yeah, one tweet. Yeah, and he got, yeah, he got blocked after a bunch going crazy. And now he was, he was like us, and it, it sucks that we lost someone like him. <sighs> <sighs> All right. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but uh, there will be uh, another GoFundMe that's coming up. <clears throat> and I'll put it up on our uh, social media. And I hope mm-hmm. everyone, you know, can help out as much as they can. The world needs nerds, man. The world needs nerds and people that are into all this stuff. Yep. And when you lose one, it's tough. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you vibe, you know. Yeah, man. When you find someone else that's passionate about the same things that you are, it's, uh, you know, it's tough. Uh, but, you know, we pray for his family uh, and his friends. And my closing statements are fucking tell your friends you love them. <sighs> Anything about aliens, Jay? You got anything about aliens? Um, aliens. Um, well, I heard that um, Zip Zap and Gleep Glorp have been uh, really uh, been causing some trouble. Lately. Yeah, they're like, they, apparently there's been like, you know, oh, on Christmas where they have the radar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apparently they're like, there's like a, a thing out there where they're, like they're dropping their mixtape across the country. Yeah, yeah. And like people are just getting it. And you're like, what the fuck is this? And there's yeah. like all these crazy hits. They don't get the whole earth lingo because they're like, oh, airdrop. Oh, we can do, you know. So yeah, they just, and they, they just come do in it. Saucer yeah. And they just yeah. drop them at, from the air. Yeah, and people saucer. are like, what the fuck is this? Uh, yeah. There might be an official release in October, I think. I, I don't might know. Might be. I, I heard. I heard. Well, but, you, you know, said it, so I heard it. So. Yeah, right. Exactly. So it must be true. <laughs> it must be. It, it must be true. Mm-hmm. Uh, God damn it. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad to have you back, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, this is a, we're, we're, we're doing it now. now and yeah. then, now we're going to have, uh, have a dedicated studio to mm-hmm. uh, terrorize the listeners. <laughs> yeah, it's only going to get better. Like, this is, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to catch up here and keep things going. And uh, we, uh, yeah, we got a space now. And, uh Video is imminent and it's yeah. coming. The the video episodes are coming, mm-hmm. and um, you're gonna see us being fucking silly. <laughs> yep, I think for the first episode, we're probably both gonna be eating stew. Cause... Oh yeah, there has to be. 
It yeah. has to be. Because uh, if you're not aware, people like Steve. People like, people like Steve! And, he goes. Yeah. Yeah. and also, uh, it's Damn Daddy Productions. So uh, It sure is. So, Jay, before we, we get out of here, uh, <laughs> what, what, what's it like so far, being, being a Pennsylvanian? Um, I'm, you know what? It's actually funny, because I was just talking to Christina about this, uh, my wife. Um, we were talking about this so far since we've been here, and we've you know gone to a bunch of stores, went to a couple of places. Everyone's way nicer here, <laughs> and that's I was I was surprised by that because, right. and then I was like, you know what? I'm not surprised by that because then we were sitting thinking about it. I was like, everyone in Jersey is a fucking asshole, and then like I come here and like everyone's like fucking you know. They might be not doing their job even close to the way it's supposed to be done, but they're really nice about it. <laughs> Three and a half hours to get my tires done. Um, <laughs> I shit you not. That's um, awesome. Oh, yeah. But we're loving it so far. I mean, you know, we've always wanted to come here, and it's um, yeah, it's great to finally be here. Um, we got a fucking, we got a great house. Um, yeah, you do. It's awesome, man. I can't. I can't wait for people like Studios to be set up. Yeah, and it's and it's a nice old house too. It'll be yeah. hundred years old next year, so I think that's that's proper. That we, you know, <laughs> going to be recording in an old, uh, very old basement, right. and um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's all good. So uh, uh, that's, that's it, man. So uh, so we're both coming to you from the uh, the Keystone State from here on out. Right, and now hopefully this is one of our last remote episodes. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, going forward, we'll have those, you so know. the next but, time you hear that's a remote episode, it's Ken's fault. So yeah, just give him shit for it. Yeah, exactly. Come at me. <laughs> Come at me, guys. It's fine. But uh, once again, send sorry. send us your stew, re- uh, stew uh, uh, yeah. recipes. Send us your best stew recipes. Send us all your uh, best ghost stew recipes, uh, mm-hmm. cryptid recipes, stories. Uh, sorry for blubbering, gang. Um, but for this episode of Other Dangerous Podcast... I'm Ken James. And I'm Jason McKetrick. And as always, have a spooky evening. Thank you for listening to Other Dangers Podcasts. Have you encountered the other dangers? If so, you can email us at otherdangerspodcast at gmail.com. And if you'd like to have a discussion about the paranormal, you can find us at Other Dangers Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. There you can find submitted pictures, videos, and artwork from listeners. We are now streaming on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else podcasts are streamed. And after listening, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so we can continue to bring you the other dangers.